Scrapyard Cars resurrects the rarest Mopars ever made. And this season, we changed everything. We brought in brand new team members, raised the bar for quality, and streamlined restorations. Setting out to restore four classic Mopars. A 383 Cuda, a 340 Cuda, a 446 Pack Challenger, and a 426 Hemi Charger. I hear a Gregorian can. A Gregorian can? <laughs> The only question was, would the new team be up to the challenge? What is wrong with you? This looks exactly like you were too lazy to turn your gun the other no. way. Quickly coming together, they navigated the obstacles of combining original equipment with aftermarket parts. I'm really proud of the team this week. They did a phenomenal job. And with the introduction of our newest ghoul, Dave Ray. He's kind of a mini-me, which the world needs more. The 383 Cuda was delivered after a grueling four-year wait. Oh my God. Well, when I saw that thing coming around the corner there, it was just couldn't believe it. Oh my God, it's just gorgeous. But the 340 Cuda was a troubling story. When the engine was fired for the first time, something went terribly wrong. And no matter what the team tried, a solution could not be found. What the f*** this happened? After the engine was sent to the machine shop for diagnosis, a large amount of sand was discovered inside the block. They had suspected that maybe somebody had actually poured sand down the engine. So the real question is, who had access to the engine? Who had something to gain by it failing? Who had the motivation to sabotage it? The engine was repaired, reinstalled, and the 340 Cuda was completed. Through the turmoil, one thing became clear. The new team was exactly what we needed. Anything you want. No okay. shakes. Uh, no. There were never before faced challenges to overcome, new cars to be documented and disassembled, and even friendly competition between Mark and Will. You go out there to paint the engine, I think what you're gonna end up doing is going back to school. We were also surprised when an old restoration revealed a hidden secret. So the guy who's driving the truck says, all of a sudden he hears a weird noise and the engine just explodes. I believe that he was driving along, and he heard And it made a weird noise and stopped running. When all the dust settled, it was time to finish the 446 Pack Challenger. Arriving when we finished our sunroof Challenger in season three, this car went from rust bucket to award-winning OEM quality within two years. Painted by Will, assembled by Dave, and detailed by Alyssa and Mark. Fruit of my loin? No, daughter. My daughter. After restoring the 1970 Challenger, the team was afforded a rare opportunity to compare it with today's 2014 Challenger. Skinnier, it's a little bit narrower, taller, but that has more ground clearance. With the Plum Crazy 446 Pack Challenger on its way back east, the 1970 Hemi Charger became the ultimate priority. Beautiful, there's that. Perfect. It arrived two years ago with a frozen engine. We got a little bit of a standstill just because the intake manifold was really fused into place. After disassembling and restoring the engine, the numbers matching block turned out to be in perfect working condition. The bodywork was heavily supervised by Mark, as he promised the owner he would paint the car to perfection. After detailing and installing the engine and Dana, the car came together very quickly. Awesome. Beautiful seat. With a near wiring disaster carefully sidestepped, the Hemi Charger is finally ready for the last steps of its restoration. It all builds to the biggest reveal yet. Don't miss a second. You're watching the season finale of Graveyard Cars. I'm getting ready to do the blackout on the, on the front end of the 70 Charger RT. I'm gonna get the boss because I wanna make sure I, I get it done right, just like they did back in the factory. Oh, good, good, good. You're ready to do that? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, just make sure I got her taped off pretty decent. So remember now, this is crazy, but the way they did this is these cars were gonna need to go higher. They were coming down an assembly line and they were already built, built out. Now, if this was really 1970, all the wiring harnesses would be in place, everything would be in place, and we're about to bomb it all black. But gotcha. that's, I can't bring myself to do that, but 
the point is, is everything on the front of the car is supposed to be black from this kind of a pitch. So what we want to do is raise the car up to emulate as though we were down in a pit and the car was rolling over our head like we we're going to drop the oil out of it. That guy is down inside that pit and he's shooting up at an angle like this, a very natural angle, whatever that would be. Gotcha. That's the angle that this blackout should be, something to that effect. Okay. Yeah, I always knew that the, the cars had the blackout on the front end because, you know, others that I've worked on and stuff, and you see the runs and stuff, and they're just kind of poorly done. Uh, I didn't know until talking to Mark that there was an actual guy standing in the pit while the cars were coming down the assembly line with a gun and just shooting it down. And so it, it gives you the, the idea of, like, now I know why all that paint seemed like it was in an angle because it wasn't all painted really nice and neat. So, you know, that's, that's what you get. You, you talk to the Mopar master, and you get the Mopar answer. These guys were animals. I mean, on the assembly line, you had to black that out before all the rest of the stuff went in the front end of the car. What they didn't want you to be able to do was to see body color showing through the grill. Like in our 70 Charger grill, that's a wide open grill with a bunch of little teeth in it. You could see body color. They didn't want that. So the last thing on the way off the assembly line was to black out the front of the car. But they didn't do it like you and I would do it, where we just go over, let the car down to eye height, mask everything off really nice, scuff it with a scotch brush. They didn't do any of that, so we're not going to. We're just going to emulate the look of it. And so there's your angle. Gotcha. And carry that all the way up. These are the finer points of detail and that are kind of fun. Yeah. And it's cool because if you go out back and you look at any of the cars that are missing bumpers that haven't been painted or wrecked or been worked on, yeah. you'll see this that same pattern where like you oh, see how automatically you don't have any paint right there? That's yep. natural yeah. because you aren't shooting straight into yeah, it. Yeah, so he's got a gun, so he's just hitting yeah. hard because it's bombed. on its way moving. He's got so. Colombian gold all over the place. He's <laughs> blasted. It's 4 o'clock. It's time to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he says, this is my he's already been call. spraying this crap all day without a, without a mask, so he's done. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it turned out good. You know, you can see the good angle. You can still see some burnt orange you know, uh, around the black and stuff. So it seemed like once you drop it down, you can kind of see the way it looks. I'm like, well, that's the way they look. With the front inner structure blacked out, as per OEM specs, I am going to walk away and let Dave take over from here on our charge. Uh, we got our panel back from Will. He did a fantastic job painting our, our rear panel. What we did was we had to take that coating off of the aluminum. Uh, that was really fogging the aluminum, and in order to polish it, you have to remove that coating. And it's kind of a grueling process, but we were able to get the coating off, get the aluminum polished. Will was able to tape off our aluminum and repaint our panel uh, semi-flat black. So now we're going to put our body tags on, and we're going to put our clips on and put it on the car. So we'll start with our body tags. As you can see, our old ones were in pretty bad shape. They were all pitted and looked terrible. And the way these work is these are actually pressed on from the factory on that rear panel. And to replace that rear panel is very expensive and trying to find uh, an NOS one is almost impossible and it would be way too expensive. So what we did was we got the replacement body tags here. As you can see, they're pin style. So what we'll do is we got some of these little locking retainers here and we're gonna put them on with those and then we'll trim this backside as needed to make the clearance for the rear panel. All right, so we're gonna lay our tag in there. And we're gonna make these little dudes fit. Okay, and these things just kind of doesn't help when I got them in my mouth. These things kind of just slide on there, and as they slide on, they kind of bite the pin and hold it in place. So we'll just keep pressing those in there like so. Take a look at our panel there, and voila! There's the charger. As you can see, that looks fantastic. Beautiful piece. So now we're going to start by putting our clips on there. They're one of those one-off clips that are really hard to duplicate. These just kind of snap in underneath the lip there. And what's nice is they give you this adjustment. That's why they're just kind of a one-off style pin. Stay tuned. There's much more to come on this ultra-rare 1970 Hemi Charger. The ghouls are rushing to complete the assembly and finer points of detail, culminating in our biggest reveal yet. Coming up on this episode of Graveyard Cars. This incredible story becomes more ghastly with each report. Right now, we just got our rear marker lights in our 70 Charger RT and uh, we're working on our front marker lights. Uh, the front marker lights go inside of the front fender of the car. This one here in particular goes on the left side. Works as a marker light, so you can see it at night from the side of the car. It also works as a turn signal. So when your front turn signal is flashing, 
so is your marker light on this particular model. Now, as you can see, looking at these, they're really hammered. I mean, they've, they've been through the weather, through the rest, this car's been sitting for a while. All these screws are all rusted out. These two screws here actually hold the actual marker light lens in. It's just pitted, it's just terrible. So what we have here is we got our new marker light assemblies. As you can see, these look beautiful. They're, they're reconditioned, got all new plugs and everything in for the light bulb itself. And then here we got our new marker light lenses to put inside. This is the plate that goes actually behind the marker light and holds it into the fender and then these two little nuts go on there and hold those on as well. So as you can see, there's undercoating on there and a lot of road grime and everything else. So I'll actually hot tank these and then I will actually use some stripper and take all the stuff off and try to retain that uh, galvanized finish so it looks all original. Okay, we're gonna get our lens in here. It fits pretty good. I get our cover on the back, and our cover is marked top, so you know which way it goes on. Okay, put her up in there. Get our new nuts on there like that. It's got a pretty nice even reveal all the way around. That's what you wanna get. A lot of times it's not gonna be exactly perfect because it's an aftermarket part, so. For the most part, this has got a really good reveal. Okay, well that's one part down and another probably 1,996 to go. We're getting closer. So right now we're getting ready to install the front bumper assembly on our 70 Hemi Charger. We've got my main friend Mike here's gonna give us a hand because yeah. this thing weighs about nine tons. It does, yeah. You're gonna like, do the muscle like steps. A third of the car. Color. Mike always handles all the muscly stuff for me. <laughs> He's the man. Okay, you're gonna wanna watch a lot of different things, like up here, in there, out there. I'm trying to get down like this. A little bit more, Mikey. In, got it. Just four main bolts that hold the bumper brackets to the frame rails. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot to the, to the front end. A lot of thing. pieces to that, yeah. Okay, so, uh, so now all we've got left is to finish dialing everything in. Uh, that means we're gonna have a little shim here, a little shim there. You're gonna have a bracket that you need to slide in, tighten down, but for the most part, that's that's there. So we're gonna put the balance on it next. We'll put the uh, turn signal indicators in, finish dialing in the bumper, and this thing's ready to go. Do you know anything about, um, looks like some confirmation for my dad to throw out pitch for the M? No. I haven't heard anything about this, let's go ask. So apparently my dad is gonna be throwing out the first pitch for the M's game. Um, I'm really nervous for him because I don't think he's done any ath anything athletic in like the last 10, maybe 15 years. Hey. Do you know what the part number is for the correct drive shaft for a 383, 426 Hemi or 440 with the big yoke or 70 Barracuda? Uh, sure don't. 2883 636. Okay, perfect. Shoot. So I got an email about you supposedly pitching the first pitch in the end game. game. Yep. Oh, so you know about this? Is this yeah, something you they, want to do? The mayor's office called and asked if I would be willing to throw out the first pitch at the Eugene Emeralds baseball game. Eugene Emeralds are a minor league team owned by the Chicago Cubs. Uh, they're over in Eugene, right next to where the Oregon Ducks play at Austin Stadium. One night out of the year is Springfield night and they always ask for an honorary member of of the town. They probably asked Clint Eastwood because he did work at Warehouser for a while and he's on the list as one of the most famous people. Uh, my guess is he was busy. You know, he's got a lot of things going now that he's a director. Throw out the first bowl, the big game, you yeah. know? I figure next year I'll probably be performing halftime at the Super Bowl, so. Oh, you doing what? Huh? What, what would you do? Probably just like a, a, a reciting of maybe one of these books, you know, all around <laughs> man like. Okay, well, that's awesome. I'm nervous for you, so I hope you're gonna like practice or something, because I don't know if you saw 50 Cent recently when he did the challenge to throw the baseball out. Two quarters threw a baseball out? <laughs> no, Dad, I forget how old you are. 50 Cent, you should look him up means. on YouTube. He failed, I feel like this is gonna be you. 50 Cent is, is, is a- A is, businessman. It's a noun, it's not a no. human. He failed, you should see his pitch, it was terrible. 
And I feel like that's gonna be you and I'm worried about you. So like, I think you should talk to Will. He probably has, he has lots of kids, he's got like 10 kids. Get, he probably has a baseball bat, <laughs> baseball glove. You think I need to practice to throw a pitch? Yeah, Dad. <laughs> Definitely. All right, well have him take out an insurance policy like, I'll on his with left you. hand. Take an insurance policy out on yours. Because oh when God. I blow the ball across your mid at about a buck 20, I think you're going to be thinking a little differently about it. Dad. God. So Get the reference stupid. camera, boy. 50 cent. I don't know. Why would you name your kid after change? To address the very most asked question in the history of graveyard cars ever, where is Holly? Je m'appelle de Jante. She joined the French Foreign Legion. She's been here all the time, or she is in the Federal Witness Protection Program. The answer coming up after the break. This station will remain on the air day and night. Day and night. So after 14 million questions on our Facebook page as to where is Holly, the answer is D, none of the above. What, what's your obsession with Holly? Get over it. She was here in season three. She was our research assistant. That's it. Everything's gonna work out. Y'all need a doctor, man. That's, that's messed up. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Bumper guards, or bumperettes as they're sometimes called, is an option on all these cars. So a Challenger, a Charger, a Barracuda could have bumper guards on the front or not have bumper guards on the front. You just want to be sure when you're drilling the holes. We got the original template here. Uh, the original bumper was so rusty I didn't want to reuse it. That's why we're having to add the drill holes to this bumper. This was a really nice core bumper, a really nice one. So I wanted to have it done, but of course we didn't think to put the provisions in it for the bumper guards at the time. That's why we're making them now. To be sure they're in the right spot, we got his original bumper out, measure it five times and drill once. You just want to be sure because if you go outside the footprint of where that thing's going to go, where that guard goes, you've just ruined your bumper. You set you back two weeks, three weeks to get it re-chromed and 500 bucks. So I'm going to alternate back and forth. I've got to go all the way out to 7 16 That's the last step right here. That's the size of the original hole. If you just ram this through there, you got a chance of turning the chrome blue, getting it so hot that the metal turns the chrome a bluish color around. And if it doesn't, and if it isn't covered by the guard, it would be a little unsightly. So I'm just going from side to side. The purpose of the tape, the first purpose it serves, is giving you something to mark on, to be able to make your mark with your pen, because a pen's not going to stick to chrome. It also, if the drill bit were to get off kilter a little bit. And, and slide over, it would hit the tape before it might hit the chrome, even though if you were pressing very hard, it would go right through the tape. But it's a bit of an extra little bit of insurance. So I just leave it on there until the hole's out to where it's supposed to be. Also kind of catches some of the shards as you go through. So now we are up to 5 sixteenths. 3 eighths. Actually, that was 7 sixteenths, <laughs> so I'm done. See, I'm human too. Pull that back. And there is your OEM appearing factory hole awaiting the bumper guards. It's pretty good. Now there's a left and a right, so figure out which one. You can't tell by looking. You hold it up there, one sort of fits and one doesn't. Uh, we, got the, we got the front bumper guards on our 1970 Charger, which is an option, by the way. Uh, getting them in the right position and straight up and down is always a little bit tough. It takes a little time, but they came out perfect. Look awesome. What's up with the uh, funny shirt? I'm wearing a funny shirt? This isn't a funny shirt. This is my workout shirt. I just got back from the gym. What about you? It's a little tough to keep these guns inside of a sleeve. You're in no position to say anything about anything with the funny hat from the dude from Fargo that says that pancakes, you know that big, tall, greasy Russian dude. And then the funny shorts and the multicolored shirt. Did, did Danny Bonaducci get hold of you from the Partridge family? You're in no position to say anything to anybody. I'm going to a gun show later. <laughs> the 
Did you really just knock? Do you have a baseball glove and a baseball? I figured Will would be the best person to help coach my dad. Um, he's been a coach for basketball, a coach for baseball. I mean, he has like 10 or 12 kids or something. Uh-huh. I got like five kids. I got all that shit. So you have one in, like in your car? In the trunk? I saw his trunk open the other day, and I saw like every sports ball known to man in there. I think there was baseball, football, golf ball, wiffle ball. So I figured he'd be the perfect person in the shop to go to to help. You should go get it. Did you see the ball and glove? Yeah. yeah, you know my dad's uh, throwing the first pitch for the M, I right? Heard, I heard a rumor yeah. about that. What do you think about it? <laughs> I don't, your dad's not the most athletic. I, that's what I said. We need to help him out. What are you gonna do? You're not athletic. Uh, cheerleader for you guys. Right? This incredible story becomes more ghastly with each report. The unburied dead are coming back to life. What we're working on here is our splash guards for our 70 Charger RT. This is the original one that came off this car, and as you can see, it's got a lot of rust in it. You can see right through it, and it starts to get really weak right here. We had some new ones upstairs that I went and grabbed, uh, but it turns out they're for a 68 Plymouth B body. And the difference you can see between the two, our uh, friend Tony was, for, we were fortunate enough to get a good set of used ones from him that I detailed out and painted black. But this is the 1970. This is a 68B body. The difference, they're exactly the same, except for right here, where the actual fender tab mounts to the splash guard. You can see the 70 model has a little tower on it that takes up that slack, and this one here's a little bit lower. So this little tab here is what this has got a bolt to right here. So with that tower, it meets up nice and flush. Without it, we'd be about an inch and a half too short. Purpose of the splash guard is it goes inside your inner fender well there, it keeps all that dirt, debris, and all that stuff from going inside your door jam and eventually inside your car. Again, these are plastic, so you don't wanna hit them too hard. So we're ready to start putting her in. That's it. In the club and that one dude standing there. Hey, there you are. Oh doing my the gosh. Head off. Did I see that commercial? So embarrassing. Yes, I've seen it. I wish you didn't just reenact okay. it. Okay, well, let's get a slate. I was coming over here to give you a slate. Oh, okay. Right? Yes. Yep. Okay. So let's rock. Poop it and doop it. <laughs> and go over continuing <laughs> card, half wit, brain dead <laughs> and monkey spider <laughs> bite. Monkey spider <laughs> bite. <laughs> Boo, boo, boo. Boo, 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 boo. Boo. Oh, God, the power. <laughs> now, see if those holes were lined up, you <laughs> we could put bolts in it. Or if you weren't too stupid to be able to just twist it. Brain. Okay. Whoo. Whoo. Those are things I've been doing lately. Cut. You'd still be back on the first question with Royal, and that's what they said in the meeting. First eyewitness accounts of this grisly development came from people who were understandably frightened. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Little Mopar plate, home plate, if you will. <laughs> I promise you, right now, yeah. a week's paid vacation. Okay. You cannot get it over this plate. Give me the ball. What's this? You don't need a. I don't need a. Not the way you throw, Mary. <laughs> yeah, I throw horrible. <laughs> All right, week's paid vacation. I'm throwing into the wind here. What, hey, whoa, <laughs> dude, dude. You need to compensate for it. The parking lot's clean. <laughs> That's a week's vacation. Where's my? It was two inches from the plate on my first throw. Okay, that's fine. You want another try? <laughs> that's one throw in 35 years. Well, if that was for real, I'd have done it a little differently. Throw the ball, Yolanda. <laughs> so is this for real now? Oh my God. A catcher's got to move, Vince. Basically, what we have here is we got our, our two horns for our 70. Dodge Charger RT426 Hemi. This is uh, pretty much the last thing we got to put on here. Uh, these horns here were, you know, off of a, another Charger. Uh, they're not the exact horns that came off of that car because they were pretty rusted and terrible. 
So we're gonna go ahead and bench test these to make sure they work. And uh, then we're gonna clean them up. So bench testing these is pretty easy. You just pretty much clip your uh, jumper wire, which I have right here, to the little positive terminal, the hot terminal on the horn. Then you wanna ground the horn on your negative side. All right, this one's good. Make sure we got a good connection. I think this one's not a keeper. It's funny how something like this here, you know, yeah, this is the last thing. So as soon as we get this done, we can get this car out of here, but things like this can hold you up and uh, cause you a lot of problems. One more try. If not, it's back out to the boneyard. Well, I'd say this one is uh, flatlined, kick the bucket. Try to find another one. Okay, we found a horn here. So we're gonna give this one here a test and hopefully this is our answer right here. All right, so I'll give her a whirl here. Keep our fingers crossed, say the little badoobagi. There we go, now we're cooking. So now we got two functional horns. So now it's just the art of cleaning them up. Well, we got our horns here. Got them all cleaned up and painted. They look fantastic. Uh, I did bench test them again after they're painted, make sure they're both working. Uh, so now I'm gonna install them. So we pre-fit everything, make sure they work. I got the, the correct bolts uh, that go for this particular year, for this particular horn. Uh, as you can see, these are called paint cutter bolts. And they got these little ridges on there and they actually cut the paint and uh, create a good ground. So whenever it's screwed into the radiator support wall, uh, that'll scratch fresh metal and create a ground uh, to give us good contact for our horn. As you can see, uh, this has got a little tab on there. This little tab right here goes in the pilot hole and then the bolt actually goes through this other hole. So whenever it's screwed in there, this keeps it from spinning, that little tab. Pretty. That's, that's, that's all she wrote, yeah, let's give her a test. Our battery's all hooked up. See if she works. See if she works here. Perfect. And that's that. True or false? Graveyard Cars is launching a new crowdfunding campaign so that next season will be the best season ever made in the history of the program. Answer coming up after the break. This station will remain on the air day and night. Day and night. So, true or false? Is Graveyard Cars launching a new crowdfunding campaign? The answer is true. You can go to www.graveyardcars.com for more information on how you can help us make next season of Graveyard Cars the most amazing in the history of the program. This incredible story becomes more ghastly with each report. We got our 70 charger up in the air. Uh, we got a few issues we got to sort out. Uh, we got a couple days uh, before the truck comes to pick the car up. It's going uh, east coast, so uh, we're kind of in a little jam here to get some little things you know, mapped out and worked out. Uh, I got a couple exhaust leaks I'm working on. I did a valve adjustment on it. We had a, a rocker, it was just barely ticking. So I pulled the valve covers off, which was a chore and a half, and uh, got all the valves adjusted. So we took care of that. Still got a little exhaust leak, so that's what I'm working on right now. And hopefully you get that buttoned up and it sounds nice and quiet, and we'll be ready to go here in a few days. Uh, to give you a better idea of what we're working on here, it's a lot easier to have the motor out of the car, of course. Uh, these Hemis take up so much real estate. But this is what I'm working on here. I'm on the other side. Uh, this is your exhaust manifold. This is that down tube that comes down and bolts right on the top of the exhaust manifold. Uh, this gasket right here that goes in between this flange and the manifold itself was leaking. And so these are the nuts that I'm tightening up right now. Granted, our 70 Charger RT is a four-speed car, 
so you do not have the uh, dipstick tube for the automatic transmission bolted right there. It's just by itself. Uh, and so getting to these nuts is very, very difficult underneath, but it's just time consuming. You can only move the, the wrench like a half an inch at a time. So we replaced our gasket up here, placed gaskets down here, and uh, we're hoping this is gonna solve our exhaust leak. A lot better. Gotta love my job. <laughs> I got the best job in the world. Dave. Hey, Liz, how's it going? Good. What wow, are you up to? that charger looks so beautiful. Oh, uh, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like it's almost done. It's close. It's what right do we there. What have left on it? Uh, matter of fact, just some decals, I think, is all your dad's gonna put on. Oh, really? Yeah. What we wanna look for here, it shows paint reference codes, interior review, chassis, engine compartment. It'll kind of go through here. You got factory labels and sticker reference. So you're gonna be in section 16. Just go maybe decal by decal? Exactly, kind of that would be the way to do it. Yep. Slow, that's, but that's more your dad's, <laughs> right. yeah, your dad's department. He's the, the decal master. So I have all the decals ready to install in the charger. I just need to go and grab my dad to make sure that I have him in the right place. It's a lot lower than the last one. Because the other one was along here facing inside and it wasn't that wide. This looks exactly like the one that we have. Here's what's left of the ethylene glycol warning label right here. Okay. Now this one has what's left of the emission label. This is the late 69. So do you see that footprint right there? Yeah. Where it's sticky? That's where the emission label was. So let's take a picture of that. It's actually really great working with Alyssa. She's actually making an effort to learn this stuff. I'm proud of her for that. I'm not as proud of the fact that she's a uh, car thief. Uh, my daughter's a car thief. A big deal, right? Doesn't make her a bad person. Who are you looking at? The other bases. There's no bases. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Okay, you didn't get it over. <laughs> what? Uh, you know, I think it went really well. It was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I haven't done that in a long time, to be honest. Uh, but I still got a little arm, you know? It took me about four or five tries to get it across the plate, but. You saw I hit dead on balls accurate there on that last shot, so. Uh, the last one barely, barely missed. So what I've basically done is shot the eye out of a gnat at 50 feet with a BB gun. But I think there's just big difference in going in the back of the shop and throwing a ball and getting in front of 5,000 people on a mound. You know, whatever that one dude's name is, 50 cent, half a buck, you know, four bits, he made it embarrass himself. I heard, and I read earlier that the President of the United States it even embarrassed himself throwing it out, so. I think the, uh, you know, the graveyard mentor, the ghoul, the, the grand poobah of, uh, of Mopars can uh, probably pull it, pull it off okay, you know what I'm saying? They're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that the unburied dead are coming back to life. This is the best part of any uh, build in the world is when it's done and you know it's a phenomenal job. That charger turned out beautiful. Oh, it's awesome. Dave is a phenomenal tech. I tell you what, Thank you get you. nervous when you start bringing people in because you, you're exposing your reputation to a new person you don't know anything about. So he did a phenomenal job. He really did. And uh, because of that, because of really the collective group effort on everybody's part, because everybody that works there had a part in it, we now have a 100%, it's close to perfect, there is no perfect, but it's close to perfect, 70 Hemi Charger, four speed, numbers matching car in burnt orange, white bumblebee, not the black one I put on originally, but the white, <laughs> one. But the white one with a black top. So we're excited, we're all getting ready to load into the car and go for a drive and just enjoy uh, all our hard work and labor. So Will, tell me, walk the car, you've been around it, you rode on my coattails as I painted it. I'm sorry, I, what's the, I what? No, that's all right. Oh. You rode on my coattails and tried to take credit when my back was turned. Oh, what's my favorite? 
What's your favorite component on the car? What's your favorite aspect of the car? Is it the color? Is it the stripe? Is My it... favorite part about this car is this is the last paint job that you actually will ever do. You did a phenomenal job on it. You did a phenomenal job on it. No, I got that. And okay. this is the last car that's coming out of Graveyard Cars that's been painted by you. And you know, that's, that speaks volumes on what you think of my paintwork. So, thank well, you. That's kind of a backhanded compliment, wasn't it? Right, but did you see how I did that? That was no, nicely I, done. No, it, it was a nice, yeah, we call that a segue. That was nice. Um, mm -hmm. But I know what you're getting at and I don't like it. <laughs> it was really fun for me to see Mark be able to paint a car the same color that was his first car. Um, I helped him clean up his first car, and uh, he's just been a fan of that color ever since. No, it's serious. That's my favorite part. This is painted by Mark Warman, yeah. and this is the last one coming out of here. Realistically, this is the last car right. to be painted by you. That's probably a, very, safe assumption. a fair, fairly safe assumption. Yes. And just for the record, is it fair to say I could be one of the greatest painters the world has ever known when it comes to the Mopar Classics refinishing yeah, body fit. Not a problem. One of the best. One give, of the best, if not the best. I'll just say, say it's the best. best you know, I'm not going to do that nickel and dime. Oh, yeah, right. you, you are the best. Um, I love the bumblebee stripe with the black top and the orange. I think it looks beautiful. I love how I love how they put a black top on with the white stripe. I don't. You don't like that? Nope. Uh, that burnt orange with the white stripe, I think offset's really nice. And then with the black top, the black interior, uh, the car pulls together quite nicely. I like the contrast, the and then you have I the dark it. interior with nope. it. I think that looks cool. Nope, I really it doesn't, like but it's okay. I mean, how do you choose one thing? This car's got the whole package. Right, But it's if everything. I had to choose, because this is a body style, it would be this right here. The sexiest single section Where of any car Where this line runs ever down built. that yep. way, this line runs down that way, just right there. That's incredible. 69 Dodge Cornette Super B, right here is where it would be, because it's really tough looking there. Yep. But the 70 Charger, right there. It, when you add that flare With in there, With that scoop everything. on yep. there, and the, those two interchanging lines, looks like the uh, the backbone on just the baddest chopper in the world. You like it? Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of people in the greater Springfield area with neck injuries when that car goes by. <laughs> the, <laughs> looking at it, oh. just the baddest. It was fun to work on. It was fun to put together. Seeing something like that go together, that beautiful, is really fun to be a part of. Yeah, I think the owner's gonna be really happy with the car. Really excited to see him get it. I can't wait to take a ride on it. I think my dad will let me drive it. Are you insane? Well, just cause that one time, I mean. It was worth it. No? No, but you ain't driving nothing. Me and Dave first, cause Dave did most of the work. Being a big fan of the show and seeing the amount of cars that were coming out of the shop before and now the amount of cars that are coming out of the shop, it's it's really awesome to be a part of that. The quality of the work's phenomenal and to see the number pick up is even better. Uh, the car came out really nice, so I think the fact that four or five cars left, I think we're heading in the right direction. Everybody's hard work, their attention to detail has really paid off this season. With our beautiful 426 Hemi completely done and ready to go, we're gonna head over to the baseball field and see what kind of magic the Iceman can do. As I've said many, many times before, this is not the end. We are today, we are tomorrow, we are graveyard cars. This is what we do. I'm looking forward to watching him throw. Uh, we've been practicing the past couple weeks. In the back lot, he looks pretty good, you know, but being on a mound in front of a couple thousand people, I don't know. Uh, but we're pulling for him. So tonight's Springfield's night for uh, the Eugene Emeralds, which is our local uh, semi-pro baseball team, the Emerald M's. And I think they're the Eugene M's now. So they asked us to come over and have me throw out the first pitch. So uh, I've been working a little bit on that. I think I got that down. Uh, hope I'm not gonna embarrass us too bad. I mean, I think that he's gonna do okay because he practiced, but I'm still nervous. I have no idea what he's gonna do when he goes well, out there. we don't there. have a mound What if he does shop? a That's stupid dance move? Or we what don't have he, a mound. Like, what is he gonna do? 
I mean, I have some concerns. And I was gonna punch Sluggo, their mascot out, you know, I was gonna warm up his ribs a little bit. No, oh, no, no. You gotta get down. No, I got a bad back, so I'm trying to say. <laughs> you... First, we'll probably do the national anthem, you know. Always cover my heart. You already put on that hat, and that's terrible. Oh, that looks horrible. But it goes like this. You get your hat on. Don't ever do that with your lip again. What? This is what they do. There's no question in my mind that the Charger's probably the prettiest car we've ever done. You got Dave Ray out there putting cars together better than anybody in the history of graveyard cars has ever done. You know, you talk about Will, he's a phenomenal painter, does uh, the best work I've ever had working here at Graveyard Cars, period. And that's all I can gauge against. And I also know that it's a thousand times better than the factory everywhere. Not only does Mike do a great job, uh, at what he's doing over there. But it used to be we came in here on a Saturday to put a car together and we had to do all the things that he's already got ready for us. A collective, fantastic team at Graveyard Cars allows us to be able to put these cars out in the time that we're putting them out now and to the degree of quality. So thank you to the team because I'm nobody without my team. Holy moly, guys. Oh, too late to back out now. Let's let Oh, man. Oh, nice try. You see my throw out there? About 100 miles an hour. They didn't. I, I, they don't. They didn't measure it or anything, but it looked like it. You see, it went right across the plate, and that guy kind of went like that a little bit. So. Just got through throwing out the first ball to the game tonight. Uh, you're welcome. Mayor introduced us. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I got you ready for that. That's two weeks of blood, sweat, tears for that throw. You stood in the back parking lot on company time while I threw a 100 mile an hour fastball at you. I don't see how that's blood, sweat, tears. A simple tears. thank you would be nice. Thank you. With the 1970 Hemi Charger RT completed and on its way back home, it's time to begin the restoration of our legendary Phantom Cuda. What I'm working on today is the 71 Phantom Cuda. This is the car that launched the series Graveyard Cars. Also lined up in the queue is Torino's 1967 GTX. Bill Goldberg's 1968 GTX and Smith's 1969 Q5 Seafoam Roadrunner. No, Mark. Now, this is the new you. you. What are you laughing about? To avoid getting speared, Bill Goldberg's GTX has moved up to top priority. It's just kind of time consuming, you know, taking things out, redoing them, putting them back in, but it's gonna be, you know, correct, and he's gonna love it. It's gonna be fantastic. It's a beautiful car. We've restored some amazing cars, but we're only as good as the people we work with. We're hardworking, blue collar, classic muscle car restorers with the motto, it's Mopar or it's no car. We are the new Graveyard Cars.